All right, guys, it's about to snow. All right, all right, it's winter, I know. So where is it going to snow, and how much? In this forecast, we're talking about two major winter storms, the first of which is going to impact Sunday into early Monday morning along the I-95 corridor, so we're really getting close to this one. The next one is going to occur in the deep south, some areas that will set records, likely, and on top of that, we have this Arctic blast coming in late this weekend and into the new week, too. Let's jump into the forecast and get you ready. Now, what you've been looking at to the side of me, that is one of the weather models I believe is more realistic for the storm. And you can see the somewhat heavier snow across New England and the Mid-Atlantic, but there's also some mixing. And you may also notice if you've been following the forecast that our low pressure system, it's stronger than it was just a day or two ago. And before we jump into amounts, I want to give you a look at the big picture because when we forecast, we really have to jump into the big picture before we can get into the details. And what you're looking at here, a little science, hopefully I can teach you a lesson, is what we call a trough. And this is occurring in the upper levels of the atmosphere. But you'll notice that this guy, our trough, originally starts off more north-south oriented. We call that a neutrally tilted trough. But... As you watch the trend play out, it begins to shift more towards the bottom right of your screen. We call that a negatively tilted trough. And when this trough high up in the atmosphere tilts more negatively, it gives more energy, more power to our low pressure systems at the surface. And that has been the reason that our low pressure system has trended stronger. However, the system has also trended a little bit closer to shore as our trough begins to dig farther south. So a couple factors at play here. I wanna show you some of the trends I've been monitoring and what we can look at here right off the bat is some of the models and how their data compares. And I'm gonna start with the Mid-Atlantic and move this into the Northeast. And what you're seeing as we take a look at the Mid-Atlantic here is that mixed line beginning to show up across portions of Maryland, New Jersey, uh, Delaware, and, you know, but places like DC, Philadelphia, they may be actually in luck in, in New York as well if you want snow. As while there may be some mixing on the on the beginning, it, it likely isn't going to be an all storm type of thing. This is the HRRR. I'll show you the American model here. Also keeps that mixing to the south and east of those major cities. The European model also keeps that mixing away, though it does take a little bit more through New York. So that's one thing to consider here as we take a look at this data. We'll move this forward. Uh, we'll jump it forward six more hours as this thing gets into New England. And notice how quickly this, this is moving. That snow and rain begins in the mid-Atlantic cities like D.C., Philly, uh, and New York as well. Sometime in the lunchtime hour through the early afternoon. But this snow is in and out in that location, in those locations, in about six to eight hours. So it's quick moving. As this moves into New England, we're going to see some mixing down here on the Cape and South Shore. Uh, this is the HRRR. Notice it is very snowy for the uh, majority of the state. Now, I'm not sold on a total snow event here on the South Shore, but it is trending a bit colder once again. So that's the HRRR. Here's the uh, American model. I do believe, again, that there will be some mixing in here by the South Shore, but once again, the low pressure system stays far enough away that mixing will be minimal, uh, and the heaviest snow is likely to set up out here a little bit closer to shore than thought yesterday, at least. European models more aggressive with mixing. That purple color, that sleet, I do, again, believe the South Shore will see some mixing out there, rain on the Cape, and uh, the majority of New England, the interior, will be looking at snow, and that's going to mean higher totals as well. I'll also note, too, and this includes the Mid-Atlantic, these areas that are a little bit farther off the coastline out here are likely to see more powdery snow, which adds up easier if you're closer to the coastline. That's where you're going to see uh, some heavier wet snow, which, of course, does not add up as easily. Um, this is actually a look at the uh, after dark hours on Monday, and in this area, too, we'll move it ahead uh, six more hours, you'll notice it's already out of play outside of Maine. So things move quickly here. And by Monday morning, snow is done falling everywhere. So now we can take a look at some of the amounts these models are spitting out. And uh, I'll let you know, I'm looking at um, some data that may be on the higher side here. What you're seeing essentially is uh, data that's suggesting anywhere from about six to 10 inches of snow. Anywhere you're seeing these purple colors, that includes the interior of Southern New England, portions of Northern New England. Of course, as the system comes over the Appalachian Mountains, there may be a decent snowfall out there. Uh, you'll notice there is not quite as much in the Mid-Atlantic, but this would still be a healthy snowfall and does include some major metropolitan cities like New York, Philly, D.C. Uh, the European model here is spitting out a good um, yeah, two to four inches in those major metros, if not slightly higher. Uh, those are higher amounts that will be across central mass and into the southern 
portions, uh, the ocean portions of northern New England. Here's the American model. You notice it's a shift farther to the east. I'm not so on board with this. I believe it's a little biased towards cold weather, and the American model has not performed well recently, um, but it does show higher totals, as you can tell. Not something to throw away, but uh, I'm not weighting that as much personally. I do like the HRR. I'll tell you where I don't like it, though. Uh, again, I believe it's overdoing numbers just a little bit, uh, especially closer to the coastline here. Um, in both the Mid-Atlantic and New England, but I do like roughly what it's been spitting out in terms of numbers recently. So what I'll say is that while I do believe the northern periphery, it's going to be cut off out here, uh, and by northern periphery, I'm talking about three inches or less uh, outside of that black line I just drew. And for those major metropolitan cities, you got D.C., you got New York, Boston, up to Portland, Maine here. Um, that is where it's spitting out some of the heaviest snow. Now, again, I, I do question on the east side of this if we're actually going to get that much. So Boston, it's spitting out something like 8 inches. I'm thinking Boston ends up with more like 5 to 6. New York, it's spitting out 5. I believe New York ends up with uh, closer to 3 to 5. D.C. may be uh, realistic in that 2-inch range. Philly, I don't expect 5 inches. I do believe that uh, because it's a heavier wet snow, Philly's going to end up with around 2 to 4. But places into Maine, Portland, Maine, where it is going to be cold enough, I could see certainly uh, something like 8 inches out here. And I do believe the heaviest snow uh, from the analysis I've done is going to fall in this zone I'm highlighting here. And basically in this area here, you're going to have the best um, region for more, more powdery snow, which adds up easier. It's going to be below freezing the whole time, and you'll be close enough to the shore, um, or the storm, I should say, that you get enough moisture in that area. I just circled. I am expecting there to be roughly uh, six to nine inches of snow with isolated amounts closer to 10. So some, some people could end up with double digits, but for the most part, six to nine. I wouldn't expect more than that, though, because, as we discussed before, this storm is so quick moving, which will limit some of those totals just a bit. So that's our I-95 storm. We haven't had a true I-95 snowstorm yet, so if you're a snow lover in this area, this is exciting. But of course, it's not where, nowhere near what will be the most exciting storm of the week. So we're going to jump into the cold weather, and uh, we'll call it the shocking snowfall that's going to come a little bit later on next week. As I mentioned earlier, we have the potential for an extremely rare snow event across the southern U.S. And we're not talking a you know, half inch. We're talking a real snowstorm on the Gulf Coast, literally snow falling heavily into the Gulf of Mexico. And like we did before, we're going to break this down from the top to the ground so you can get a good idea of why this is even possible and it, while it sounds crazy this will also explain why actually it isn't so much so let's talk about what we're seeing above and this is that very cold air mass i was talking about this is basically the lower 15,000 feet of the atmosphere and anywhere you're seeing those blue colors that's anomalous cold even for this time of year and you can see that cold air mass bowing all the way down into the Gulf, so we already know it's cold, but the other thing that's happening here is because this air mass is here, it's sort of putting a block on the middle of the country, and instead of our storms cutting through the central part of the country, they're actually diving south, so we have more active weather along the Gulf Coast and then riding up the East Coast. It's part of the reason we even have a storm on the East Coast at all today, or really not today, but Sunday into Monday. And as we move this forward, you're gonna notice one extra feature here. I'll show you as we get closer. We were talking about our trough before. Here's another trough you're going to notice begin to emerge here. See where those lines begin to spread out? This is our wave of energy, and it is going to continue on Tuesday and Wednesday to move through the south. It's also going to help to reinforce some of the cold air in place. So watch as this feature begins to move farther to the east, and here we are. You kind of notice it. It stands out, right, from our main core, our, our cold air core here, and that's a sign of some energy and colder air in the atmosphere that is going to make it possible for snow to fall, and this wave of energy right here is going to continue moving through the deep south, likely bringing snow to many of the regions before it uh, gets a little more worn out as it goes back into the Atlantic. So like we did before, we can take a look at uh, what is realistic and what isn't, and we'll start here. We'll start with the European model just to give you an idea of what this may look like on radar. And what you're noticing is, uh, remember we had that area of energy, that trough, it's right here. It's going to come together with some moisture out of the Gulf. And what we're going to see, you might have just seen in a second there, uh, is it's going to meet up with um, some that energy in Texas. And you're going to see the scene form in eastern Texas and continue moving through the deep south. This is emerging Tuesday morning and it will continue through the deep south, the Gulf Coast really. Uh, so far south that places like Tennessee are too far north of snow. It's going to continue through this region as we head through Tuesday into Wednesday up the Carolinas, uh, and then eventually it moves out to sea. It could clip 
portions of southern New England, but that is a whole different thing we'll worry about later. It's a Tuesday-Wednesday event. We can take a more zoomed-in view, by the way, and just give you a closer uh, look at the precip here because there will be some mixing as well. Here's our storm on Tuesday morning moving in. This is Louisiana looking at snow, uh, and literally this is the Gulf Coast out here where it will be snowing. Again, crazy, but, but true. Um, and as we continue to watch this thing move, you're going to notice there is the potential for some of that cold air to get underneath our precip, um, our rain, I should say, and that will lead to some sleet and even some freezing rain. Uh, but the Carolina is certainly in play here, Georgia in play, and believe it or not, even northern Florida is at least in play. Not a guarantee snow falls there, but it is at least in play for snow and something that we are going to continue to watch closely. thought I'd give you a, a early look at snow estimates from some of our weather models. This is the American model. The crazy thing is, is that I don't think, you know, six inches of snow out here in uh, eastern Texas and into Louisiana is uh, that off base. It may be a little bit overdone, but not impossible to say that portions of Louisiana could see their biggest snowfall since the late 1800s. It goes back a long time. American model not as sold on snow up to the Carolinas. Uh, and that's partially because the system moves out quicker. There's also going to be some mixing. I can show you the America, uh, the European model here as well. It is also on board the fairly substantial snowfall in eastern Texas and across Louisiana. New Orleans is likely going to have to plow if they can even do that down there. Uh, our system continues moving into the uh, Georgia, Florida, Carolinas. It does suggest some snow in northern Florida, just a little bit in the northernmost portion of the state. Tallahassee, though, could see some snow here. And southern Georgia and then the Carolinas, uh, you know, Carolinas could see uh, enough to that if, again, I don't know about plows down there, but they would have to plow with snow totals. Anywhere in those dark blue colors, I believe we're looking at basically in this outline here, I believe we'd be looking at something, uh, you know, around three inches, if not a little bit more. So the possibility is there for something somewhat um, major, certainly major for these areas, but this is going to be something we'll be tracking all week, and you'll really want to check back for updates as we keep a close eye on this. And before I leave you, let me just show you some of the latest data on how cold it's going to be and how low those wind chills are going to get. Looking at that cold, we'll start with temperatures as we begin Sunday morning. Anywhere you're seeing those dark purple colors, those are temps below zero. You can see them getting all the way into northern New Mexico. Move this forward, we're going to see the coldest air begin to show up on Monday morning across portions of the central U.S. You're seeing sub-zero temperatures diving through a huge chunk of the country out here, uh, and single-digit temperatures even more south of that. We could be in the single digits into places like Tennessee, again, New Mexico in play here, um, even northern Arkansas. It's not impossible in some of the higher elevations out there. And our coldest temps in the north central U.S. likely to be in the negative 20s, likely. As we get into Tuesday morning, you'll notice that cold, it's still here. We still have the chance for lows in the 20s below zero in the north central U.S. A lot of that cold diving into uh, the northeast now. We have temps in the single digits into northern Texas and temps in the 20s onto the Gulf coastline. Again, we were needed to get cold for snow out there. Cold begins to leave, though, as we get into Thursday, and um, you know we're really seeing a quick recovery into the weekend. We'll give you one more look, too, at the uh, wind chill because these are some actually crazy numbers. We'll start here with Sunday morning, and what we're seeing in terms of cold, well, feels like temperatures as low as uh, 40 below zero in the north central U.S. Those feels like temperatures are likely to get below zero into northern Texas, likely northern Oklahoma, a good chunk of the Midwest. Uh, and as we get into Tuesday, we're going to see that dive even deeper in some spots. I should say Monday first. And you can see those sub-zero feels like temperatures um, possibly into northern Texas. They're into Tennessee there. Uh, we're looking at feels like temps that may be as low as 40 to 50 below zero in North Dakota. And on Tuesday, that cold continues to shift a little bit farther to the east. Here we are Tuesday, but still a massive chunk of the country looking at feels like temps below zero. I mean, that, that is literally the majority of states Tuesday morning. And a majority of states are going to see feels like temperatures in the teens below zero, it looks like, too. So Tuesday morning, very, very cold considering the wind. But again, that does get alleviated pretty quickly and things begin to improve. We'll wrap up our video here. Hopefully you're more prepared for some of the snow coming your way and the cold, too. Of course, we'll be watching that southern snow very closely. And I'll also note for the I-95 corridor, I am a meteorologist in Boston and I love snow, so I'm excited for this. Uh, if any of you guys are in the Boston area, be sure to tune into uh, Channel 25 News. That's where you can watch me. And uh, we'll make sure we're back here with another weather update very soon for that southern snow, the cold, and, of course, everything that comes after. See you next time, guys.